And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Coral, generational experiencer of paranormal strangeness and UFO experiences. Some with abduction type markings slash bruises, strange images and UFO videos, huge number synchronicities, shadow people, orbs, psychic messages, and more. Coral, thank you for joining me and welcome. Hi, thanks for having me on your show. Um, I've been wanting to be on for a long time. Yeah. Well, I wish we would have met earlier because I'm so happy to have you. Coral, how did all this start for you? Did you have some sort of spiritually transformative experience that awakened you? Um, yeah, so it's it's been happening, I think, anyway, it's been happening most of my life. Um, I had experiences when I was younger um, that I definitely thought were paranormal, um, but I didn't realize what was actually happening until like 2021 in the summer. Um, I went to my first paranormal event with my mum, never been to one before, didn't really know what was going to happen, didn't expect anything to happen. Um, And then I saw my first like huge football size orb. It was it was like translucent. It went past the door. Um, Never seen anything with my eyes as an adult before. Um, And then we was in one room in particular on our own. Um, it was like really dark around us and there was no one else in there except for me and my mum. And I could all of a sudden, and I've never felt energy before. And, um, it was like, something was like almost pressing on my back. Um, it something felt really heavy and negative. And my mum started to notice that like my attitude was changing. Um, and then following from that, well, we, we actually got home, pulled up at my mum's house at. 333 in the morning, which is one of the things that I'll speak about um, with the synchronicities. Um, But once I've been to that paranormal event, basically, I started experiencing feeling things touching me that weren't there. I started seeing orbs in the house with my naked eye. Um, I could actually see them. I was starting to see sparkles. Um, I then started to see shadow people. Um, not specifically like in a figure or anything, but it was just like a blur, but they were all different sizes. Um, I then started to see UFOs because I was like watching the sky a lot more. It was like during lockdown time. Um, As I say, I was watching the sky quite a lot. And because of that, I started to be able to meditate. Um, Sorry, that was my cat thumping onto the floor. That's okay. Um, I was able to start meditating um, and it increased and increased with time that I could do it. Um, Not a guided meditation or anything, um, just doing it on my own. Um, And because of that, it slowed my mind down a lot. I was quite depressed before for years and years and years. I deal with an anxiety disorder as well. Um, So my mind started getting clearer and then I started getting messages in my mind. Um, and I know for a fact that I'm not schizophrenic or anything. Um, I wasn't on drugs, like no alcohol, um, I'm not hallucinating. I started getting these very clear messages in my mind. Um, and I've kind of got a collection of those now. And um, I know for a fact that it's it's not me, like it's something else, it's coming from something else. Um, and it is generational as well. And I had a feeling all my life, um, cause I've never really been religious or anything. Um, and I knew that something was kind of there that I couldn't explain. Well, let me backtrack for a second. Yeah. <laughs> what so, kind of paranormal event did you go to and what happened that gave you all these abilities? It was more like a ghost hunt. So it was like, um, like table tipping, um, I'm trying to think, it was uh, like doing the Ouija board and things like that, asking out, using the EVP, um, that kind of thing. Um, there was obviously history to, I can't remember the location we, where we were at, but there was there was history there. Um, 
but I just found it weird that I saw a big circular orb. The first thing that I see is a big orb. Like it was clear that I saw it as well. How did you react when you saw it? Did you freak out? No, I was more amazed. It, it, I, I, it was just exciting to actually see something with my eye. Um, Cause I'd always wondered if this stuff was real. I always wanted it to be real and then I see it. Um, and then the next day getting home and I'm seeing orbs a lot, like colored tiny orbs coming towards me going around the room. And then things touch me that aren't there, like, you know, tugging on my clothes, stroking my nose, stroking my hair. Um, I, I'm not sure, I don't know what it was specifically that, that woke me up to all of this. It's really strange, really strange. Do you think that they opened up a portal with the Ouija board and some of these beings followed you home? Maybe. Um, I mean, maybe they, they saw that I was interested and always kind of wanted to know that they are that something is there. Um, I think so. And because it runs in my family as well, you know, um, I think I was susceptible to that happening. And my mum as well, we used to watch ghosts, you know, paranormal ghost TV shows all the time. Um, you know, in the UK, we've got one called Most Haunted and things like that, and Ghost Hunters. And uh, I think something knew that I was interested um, and I mean, a lot of experiences and abductees say this, but, and, um, my friend calls me the synchronicity queen, the number queen, because I, every single day, it's not just the time that happens with the synchronicities. It's arriving at places. It's tickets with, when I'm working, I get like, um, timestamps for the tickets that I work. It's everything. There's numbers all over the place. Um, that I think I started seeing 11 11 in my early 20s now I'm 32 but in my early 20s I was seeing 11 11 on the microwave for example all the time and I couldn't explain it and I didn't think anything of it but now I know why I was seeing it um so do that's you, usually a sign <laughs> do you feel that once you started seeing these beings and they're around you and you felt like they were touching your back or something has this been a positive thing or has it been negative, like they're bothering you? It's been a mixture. Um, at first it was amazing because I was like, okay, I can see this stuff. I'm getting footage of UFOs. Um, you know, things are happening that sh I sh I've never experienced before um, as an adult and I can't explain it and it's finally happening. Um, as I say, I had a consciousness shift. My mind was a lot happier. I, for a full six months, I was really, really happy, like clear-minded. It was amazing. Um, like even my my husband saw a different side of me. My family did as well. Um, but sometimes when I was on my own in the house, I, you know, if I see a shadow going through the room, it can freak me out. Um, when things touch me that aren't there. Uh, that doesn't freak me out for some reason. It does when I wake up from sleep. Like the other week, something touched me three times, poked me on my my leg. Um, you know, I've heard growls before that have woken me up, like like dog growls. I don't have a dog. Um, I've had my name whispered to me to wake me up from sleep. Um, you know, there's been a lot of stuff that has happened that has freaked me out. Like I felt and I felt watched, like properly watched. Um, knowing that there's nothing there. Does your husband have anything happen to him? One of the videos that I'm going to share, um, he's in the video and it's a daytime footage UFO video. And he was there. See, he, he saw that and you'll be able to hear him in the video. He has got, he's had body marks and I can't say for sure that they were like proper, you know, abduction marks. Um, sometimes they do look like it, but I'm not sure. He he sees me all the time experiencing things. I, I'm really open about it and I speak about it. I'm like, okay, I've just seen a shadow. Hello, you know, I, I speak to them to kind of calm my anxiety. Um, he hasn't seen anything. For example, he was playing a video game um, about two weeks ago. So he's looking right at the, the TV playing El Elden Ring, his game. 
and I see a white, big cloaked thing, shadow, move right, sweep through in front of the screen. And I go, did you just see that? And my husband didn't see it. And he wants to see this stuff as well because he he knows that I'm seeing it. So, I mean, um, last weekend at my mum's house, I've never seen anything with my mum at the same time. And we, again, we saw something white, um, you know, like a shadow, but it was pure white. And I went, did you just see that? Because I saw it in the corner of my eye because she looked that way. And, and I went to my mum, did you just see that? And she did. And Luke, obviously, my partner, obviously heard us speaking about it. Um, so, no, he, he's never seen anything. And it's frustrating for him and me. Well, let's take a look at some of your videos. <laughs> yeah. I've, um, I've shortlisted quite a few of them. I've got, um, so I've got a few videos. I've got a few pictures that are really, really weird. Um, a few screenshots of some of the videos and I've got some abduction marks I can show. So I'll just share my, my screen now. Right, go ahead and share your screen. So this one was in our local park and it was, I think it was just before 12 p.m. So it was in the afternoon, it was daytime. Um, it, it's a bit embarrassing because uh, you, you'll see. <laughs> Um, oh. Yes, yeah, so I'm kind of running there to, to get closer. What is it? Can you see? Oh, yeah. Look on my phone. It's really bright. Yeah, that white dot that you yes. can see with your eye right there. Yes. Oh, my eyes Is it? Open up. Is it open up? What is it? Oh, I don't know. It's moving smoothly. Could it be a satellite? Maybe. Oh, my eyes are Let me just video it and then I'll do the satellite tracker. Oh. Did you notice that? Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I notice these things. Before this happened, did you just spontaneously look up in the sky or did you get like a knowingness or a, a message to look up? No, um, it's happened quite a few times on my best sightings that I've had. I will have a feeling to look up. I don't get a message or anything in my head. It's, it's literally a feeling to look up. I don't think it was a satellite because to me that's too bright. Yeah, I'm kind of saying that as a backup just in case, but to me, I knew that it was something I've, you know, I've seen these things before, I've seen different things, and I, I kind of know what to look for now. I might be wrong every now and again. Um, people usually are, you know, you might see the ISS, for example, the space station. Um, I've made that mistake before, and some people have. Um, but, you know, that's not the space station. It's, I don't think it's a satellite, like, it's not a balloon. It's, it's to me, it's an orb. It's definitely an orb. It sounded like your partner was saying, it makes my eyes hurt. I think that's more just because it was blue, proper blue sky, daylight. Um, so maybe his eyes were sensitive. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think it's pretty cool. Let's check out another one. This one was, I was meditating outside in the back garden. This is again at my old house. This is when I, this house is where I started experiencing all of this. Um, so I was meditating in the garden and I see this coming across. So to me, I'm not sure if it is something, but I think it might be. This is on my birthday month. And I was on my own as well. Did you hear anything when you saw it? No. No. They're all I they're always silent. Because it came gliding right above the house, like, you know, 
really smooth. Well, I don't think it is a drone because you would hear it. I've heard drones. We we have a football stadium stadium two in between our house out at the old house, and you can hear a drone. I've seen drones before. It, it made no noise. It's almost kind of like it's floating in the air. That's what worries me a bit. I'm like, is it a balloon? But I don't think it is. Mm, yeah, it makes me think so, it is too. But usually balloons, I guess they'll either be going up if they have enough pressure or they'll just kind of keep floating by in the sky. Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've recorded balloons before just to see how they move. Um, I had one about a month ago that I recorded and it doesn't usually move like that. This one is one of my favorite ones. Um, this is at this house. It, I was looking out of the window of this room um, where I'm like glancing at now. And that that month in January last year, I saw like, four, I think it was four or five daytime sightings I had in a row. And um, I had a feeling again to look up the same thing. And that's where I saw it. So this, this sighting though, I had a very similar sighting with my, actually, my husband had, has seen some, another UFO before. Um, it was kind of similar to this one I'm, that I'm about to show, but there was loads more. I had a feeling to look up right right above me. There was like some, um, they were like cloud colored UFOs in a formation. Um, I think there was one at the front, two, three, and then four. And they were really high up. And then they kind of disappeared and dispersed into the sky. And what I could see was very similar to what I'm going to show you. It was like stars in the sky, but there was like eight, eight of them. And I said to my, to my husband, look up, can you see that? And he could only see one, but I could see eight of them. Now, this is what they look like, but this is a different sighting. I see that one. There's loads. And I saw one flash. There's two, three. Yeah, now I'm seeing them. <laughs> Interesting that they're kind of flashing in and out. There was more below as well. That's the only thing about this zoom in. But This was at one, two, one, two, three, so 1230. So did they just flash for a while and then go away? I don't remember, but I think so. Hmm, it's pretty amazing. So I've got a psionics camera. What is a psionics camera? A night vision. It looks like it has lights. Again, you didn't hear any sound, so that wasn't a drone. No sound. Do you ever try interacting with them, like speaking to them and see if they respond? Yeah, every now and again. Um, it's been a while since I've actually seen anything. Um, the activities all around has actually calmed down in the past year and a half. Um, but yeah, every now and again, I'll try um, just to see if it affects anything. And that was cool. So watch the bottom. Something will pop up. Well, it seems like something's flashing at the top. Yeah, there, that as well. Do you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Again, I, I, I can't say that that's like an orb or a UFO for sure, but. Because we don't have fireflies here. Well, fireflies don't go that high in the sky.
And there was one there as well. Did you see that? Yeah. All right, let's see some of the pictures of what you have. I was taking a video of a black orb that was in the background, like really far away in the daytime in the back garden at my old house. Again, I can't say that it was for sure a UFO, um, but I think it might have been. In this video, my friend on Twitter, um, he kind of looks at people's videos and, and his own UFO videos and slows them down frame by frame because you can catch stuff, obviously. If they're going really fast, you might capture something. Um, this is what he captured. And I didn't see it. It went over my head. This is frame by frame. And I've got a close-up of it as well. So I've got a close-up of this thing. So it must have gone really, really fast. If I didn't notice anything, and it's like, okay. <laughs> That's amazing. I think it looks really, it looks kind of robotic. It's really weird. Yeah. Um, some of the photos that I've taken as well, like when I was watching the sky a lot at my old house when it first started to happen, I was like just recording stars for some reason. Um, just in case like an orb did come across and I, I managed to capture it. But some of these don't make sense as to, how these can be stars like I don't understand um and they're really freaky as well so these are the ones that I think most look like faces as well that I've collected so this one was actually an orb going by I zoomed in that's what I got can't explain it um some of them I can't remember what they are um this one was an orb that was on our front this house it was when we first moved in um and i thought it was an insect but i i took a screenshot and that to me looks like a gray face and this one this one was meant to be a star and this one i think was an orb and then i can see a face here and it's the same with this one. So these are orbs that are in the sky. I've got just one more photo I want to show. Wow. Um, so I could hear a, a helicopter, like an emergency helicopter at the whole house when it first started happening. So I saw this helicopter. For some reason, I think it was either a pictures or a video that I took. And then you can see something here at the bottom. Yes. So that's the zoom in of it. Again, that didn't make any sound neither. So it wasn't a drone. So I thought that was a, a really cool capture that I got. It is. It's kind of private. It's on my inner thigh, which was really weird. Um, I woke up with it from sleep and noticed it. Um, this was in March 2022. It didn't hurt. It, it cleared within a few days. Um. And to me, it looks like there's three puncture wounds. I can and see I, that. I didn't wear any jewellery in bed. Like, I didn't have a pet at that time. There was nothing in bed that, you know, I'm a really, really light sleeper. Like, nothing stabbed me. Um, and it kind of freaked me out when I saw it. Really freaked me out. I bet. Um, and what's weird is this next next one that I'm going to show you was almost a year on the dot by five days. So this was March the 15th, 2022. This next one was the 10th of March, 23. So again, it looks like three marks under, under my tattoo, which I found really odd. Maybe he's leaving you a message. Well, it's weird because whenever I have seen, um, when I have seen like beings in my dreams, they're always greys. It wouldn't surprise me that maybe the gray has a little bit of a sense of humor or just letting you know, hey, this is from me. Well, um, in, when was it? Um, 
I think I might have seen him when I was a kid and I'll explain why. Um, so when it all started happening um, in, when was it? October the 21st of 2021, I had a dream that was really, really vivid. And behind this door, a gray, so a gray that had that, you know, that head, that typical gray face. Um, I always see them like that. It poked its head out like behind the doorway and it was almost like it was introducing itself, um, but it didn't speak. It was like telepathic and it was like it was welcoming it itself. And then two days later, um, I have like the most vivid dream about disc UFOs above everybody. I was looking up and I was like really calm and everyone else was like shocked. Um, but the reason why I explained this dream of the, the gray pop in its head behind the door is when I was little, I saw a white ghostly hand wave behind a door. Um, and I did have an abduction type dream and this was all before the age of eight. So um, I do, it could be a sense of humor, I don't know. Um, I, I do see them as quite cute, which might be quite weird to say. Um, and I mean, that might calm my anxiety about it because I have had some frightening dreams with them in um but yeah they they always present as really cute and adorable it may not even be about humor i mean it may be literally the being trying to let you know that i'm reaching out to you possibly i'm not sure i'm open to opinion <laughs> okay you got anything else so this one was on my husband's hand he had like a huge like almost like a thumbprint on his on the top of his hand oh and I've got a little explanation there as well um I was hearing creaks in the bedroom I hear like um like letterbox door knocks and things like that and it's always in a repetitive free um I hear beeps as well in the night growls so this one was last week um, I kept getting little bruises on my arms that I can't explain. Now I can't say that they're definitely something, um, but this one was on my husband. You see here. It was a really weird shape. Wow. Um, I can't really explain that really. Um, this one was in June. This was mine. It looked like the dots again. I have been having really intense dreams lately as well. And I'm always seeing the shadows and whatnot. This was what it looked like when it faded. So it's not as bad. It didn't hurt. And my my cat has been waking me up a lot. Um, there's been about 10 different accounts of my cat meowing me awake at three in the morning. So I don't know why. <laughs> mm, that's interesting. Oh, and this one. Again, can't say anything really, but I think this one looks like a triangle and I didn't do anything to my foot. I don't know what that one is. That could just be like an insect bite maybe, but it's there for reference. This one, I don't know how I scratched myself and there's a bruise next to it. And then this one, there was two bruises on my arm and this was last month as well. Do you think that these ETs are interdimensional beings? Yes. Um, reason why I say that is when I see things with my naked eye, they usually show as like really bright orbs, um, either like pure light, white light. I've seen one of those um, like blue colored orbs. I've seen a gold one. I've seen shadow orbs. I've seen huge shadows that look like they're walking through the room. Um, I've seen shiny slivers of light, which I can't explain, like small bits. I've seen, um, have you ever seen the film Predator? So when he goes invisible or is cloaked, mm -hmm. he, he looks, you know, you can see that there's something there. Um, I see that quite a lot. Um, there's always something like in the doorways as well. Um, and the things that I see in the sky as well, especially with the orbs like they seem interdimensional to me when I had the dream of one of the greys um about three months ago no it was uh, May the 1st actually I had a really frightening dream and 
there was this plaque that's got my grandma and granddad on it, a wooden plaque in the kitchen. And these dreams always happen in the kitchen for some reason. So this plaque was moving like poltergeist activity in my dream. I go to take a video. And when I pull my phone out, a gray uh, kind of like starts fading in. And it was like, to me, it seemed like technology, but it was just a gray face. Um, and then I woke up and I was like muffled, screaming myself awake. And I think it was like one of those times, like two, two, two in the morning. Um, but yeah, I think, I think they're interdimensional. Um, they kind of like have a ghostly look to them. Um, and I, I kind of, I know I shouldn't really say this cause I'm probably not ready, but I feel like I am ready. I actually want to see more because I've been seeing the same stuff that has slowly progressed since 2021 now. Um, and you know, I'm getting more brave and, uh, I'm just frustrated because I, I think I want to see more. But yeah, I think they're interdimensional. In waking life, it appears that they don't seem to bother you. But you do say that you have these nightmares or these terrible dreams, which to me seem to be negative. So overall, do you feel like this experience is positive or negative? I think it's split down the middle because... They're not, I feel like they're not hurting me, but I kind of feel like I'm kind of traumatized in a way. I feel like I've got PTSD. Um, I feel like it's a learning curve though as well. I feel like, I feel like I'm in school kind of thing. Um, I mean, I have had, dreams where I'm in, it's like I'm in a meeting with loads of people, but I never see their faces and I'm being taught something or I'm in a school or um, there's like, I'm being given a child or I'm pregnant and things like that. Or I'm seeing, um, I'm having dreams of guides. Like, like they're always like really perfect looking. Um, but then there are the nightmare dreams. Um, I mean, I've seen dreams of people I've been in a vat of fluid before. Um, I've seen a pregnant woman and a guy in a vat of fluid. It was like green fluid in like a pod. Um, you know, I've had abusive dreams, um, like actual ones that I I won't explain, but I've, you know, I've been kidnapped, I've been abused, I've been chased. Um, really traumatic experiences. Um, I've had the greys like one example is I had a dream about my brother who's two years younger than me and was on the webcam like this in the dream. And then he, his face all of a sudden turned into a gray and it was like glitching. It was like moving really weirdly and it was really disturbing. And it was making like a really loud clicking noise. And I do hear clicks in my ears as well. Um, some of this stuff has been nice though. You know, when I see like, really really bright orbs and I do see the craft in the sky or like um I get the messages in my mind as well and that can be quite positive and the fact that I was depressed since the age of 16 and I had intrusive thoughts and a really like anxious person since 2021 since this all started happening I have changed for the better um it has improved my life weirdly um, so I wouldn't say it's all bad, but I do get scared. Do you think their intentions are good or bad? I couldn't really say. No. I recently had a guest on that we talked about contacting ETs using a Ouija board. And to me, I feel like you're kind of confirming that. What do you mean? Sorry. <laughs> well, he... He uses a Ouija board to contact ETs, whereas most people use it to talk to spirits or ghosts or whatever on the other side. But he uses it to make contact with ETs. And it kind of sounds like that's what's happened to you. Okay. Oh, you mean so like when I went to the paranormal event? Right. Because I have been to two. And the second one I went to the year later, um, again, I was with my mom and we, we went back to my mom's house after and as I said, the first time I went to the paranormal event, we pulled up at the house at 3, 3, 3 a.m. 
But this next year, we pulled up at the house at 2.22 a.m. Um, <laughs> yeah. And when we was doing the Ouija board at the paranormal event, um, my mum is more on the side of, oh, maybe it's our ancestors, maybe it's family, it's past relatives, because um, she sees things as well. And when we was doing the Ouija board, my mum thought that I was speaking to my nan that had passed on that also saw UFOs and she was psychic. And she thought I was speaking to her at the Ouija board. But it said my child, I think. And one of the messages that I've heard, they, they said my child to me when I was like really down. Um, so I'm not sure if that was my nan or if it was them because a lot of the messages that I get um, seem to be more on the ET side of things. Do you think it's possible that you have ET human hybrid children? I'm not sure because, I mean, in Dream, um, something told me that I have a daughter, but that could just be anything. Uh, it could just be random Dream, but it was really vivid. Um, as I said before, I've been kind of... I had a baby in my arms, but I don't know if that's the future that I'm looking at because my brother recently had a baby in in May time, his first baby. Um, and I've also been pregnant in my dream before. Um, I've seen children in my dreams, but again, I don't know. I'm not sure. Did you get the UFO tattoos before or after you started having experiences? After. And I feel quite sad and lame that I got them because um, they're quite a permanent thing. But like, I don't know. Like, I've got quite a few things that have like I've got, I've got a grey um, ET plushie doll that I bought last week. I've I've got like an ornament with grey on it. I've got things with greys on, and I, I don't know why because <laughs> they do scare me a bit. Um, but yeah, I have my. Uh, I got the tattoos after the, these experiences. I was trying to count how many stars that you have on you. Is that seven stars? Oh, I don't know specifically. No, no right, where, where you are there. Oh, it's a sun, a moon, and, and how many stars is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is it six or seven? Wow. One, two, three. Six? Six. I, because the, the I think seven. there's seven stars as the Pleiades. It is. Um, that's funny. You've just said that because I didn't get the stars like that many stars intentionally. Like the fact that you just said that, as soon as you said that, I thought of the 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 Pleiades as well. I do really like the Pleiades. So how is your life currently different now that you have all this? contact it's made me a more confident person um i was never really good with communication um i always had an inkling that this stuff was real i've always been into the more woo stuff um i've always believed in the paranormal like i've always wanted to explore like lucid dreaming astral travel um i have actually been out of i think i've been out of body since this um, during a nap, um, I, the only thing is though, it has made me a bit more anxious. Um, but that, I think that's, I think that kind of comes with the territory, um, because it's the unknown and I've never like fully like seen it properly as an adult. Um, but it has made me more confident. It's made me more, sure of myself I guess um and I've definitely become more spiritual um <laughs> which is really typical um I'm trying to think it is definitely changed my life though have you ever asked yourself the question why me and if so what was your answer yeah I've always asked myself that question um to me, I'd say with that, like, I knew, it's not like I knew this would always happen, but I've always had a feeling because, like, my my uncle used to always talk about his UFO experiences, and when we were little, he used to always talk about this with the family, 
Um, my his dad had a he was a skeptic. He he used to think all this stuff was bull crap, and he had a an encounter on the ground with a UFO with beings coming out of it. My uncle saw a reptilian. He's seen a huge craft with his wife. His daughter saw orbs when she was little. Um, you know, my nan and his mother, my uncle's mother, was pregnant with my dad before he was born, and she saw a fireball go down the street. Um, she was a psychic. There were psychics in that side of the family. I uh, Only within the past month and a half, I found out that my cousin that I've never really spoken to, but I start speaking to now, he, he's seen greys and, you know, he's an abductee as well. Um, I, I just knew that this was always, always going to happen. And when I was 16, I used to constantly ask my mom, like, why does life, life feels kind of fake life. Like, it's like, I feel like an alien. I used to make that as a joke. Um, life just felt felt really strange as a 16 year old like I knew that there was something more that I couldn't explain um yeah I knew there was always something about me and I you know it took a lot of years to figure it out a lot of self-exploration well after watching this podcast people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions are you open to that yeah of course I always speak to people I'm really open about it yeah What's the best way to contact you? Let me just pull up my um, links. So I do put my footage on TikTok. Um, so my username for TikTok is Coral Karina free free free. And for Twitter, I always like nearly every day I talk about my experiences. If anything's happened or I have footage. And just to reach out to people, um, my handle on that, my username is Coral K underscore. One of the things that I think is quite important, because I am a part of a research group, mm. and I have been since 2021 um, with other abductees, we've been speaking every single day, and we kind of um, log on to each other every morning and say if everything was okay that night. And because we're researching those numbers, you know, um, we call it the triple digit theory. Okay. TBT. Okay. So, for example, if you wake up at 333, 321, 12, 12, 222, or any other number that you don't wake up at, but you see these numbers in any other way or any other synchronicity, we log it in the research group. Do you think if people wanted to see ETs, they can? Yeah, I think if you have a belief in anything out of the ordinary um i think you're susceptible to it potentially if you have anyone in your family that experienced anything paranormal or ufos or or aliens and whatever you're also susceptible to it if you're like a self-explorer um if you're an empath you know you're creative um you meditate um you're a photographer like there's loads of avenues where people find themselves finding that they are an experiencer or an abductee or a contactee or just anyone like for example that looks to the sky a lot um and if you meditate as I say I think that helps um I think if you're open-minded as well and if you if you just got a lot of wonder um and I'd say like look to the skies a lot more like we spend a lot of times on our screens like I'm susceptible to that um and I wish I didn't do that. I'm trying to work on it. But I think if we stop looking at our screens so much, you know, TV, phone, computer, I think we would find being more present, you know, we would see these things a bit easier and we would notice, notice the synchronicities. Um, yeah, I think a lot more people are, are seeing these things. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? I kind of second on what I was saying about looking to the skies more um, and spending more time being present and just being kind to yourself. Um, if you're kind to yourself and patient with yourself um, and you practice things like meditation and slow down your mind, you will have a more positive experience with this stuff. Um, and I think people need to work on their fear 
because there's a lot of stuff going on in the world and there's a lot of fear being pushed. And I think that there's another side to it that we can kind of explore. And I think that contact with them, whatever that is, um, is a potential and um, I think that's going to be in the I mean it's happening anyway and it always has been been but I think it's going to increase and I think that a, you know it can be positive. Coral thank you for your message and thank you for being my guest. Oh thank you so much for having me it's been amazing and fun as well. It has thank you. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.